On the 4th of August 1914, Britain declared war on Germany. The Great War as it was known was going to be short and snappy, a war to end all wars. It lasted till 1918. Millions were injured or died. Many volunteered for service, some as young as 13. Later, men and women were forced to enlist, but all were horrified at what met them on the front line. From the harrowing conditions in the trenches to being attacked by air, nothing could have prepared them for what they experienced. Back home in Great Britain, people were in upheaval. Initial patriotism was now tinged with fear, grief and sorrow as the death knell rose dramatically. In the northeast of Scotland, thousands of men left their farms, villages and towns. The impact on those left at home was huge. People's working lives were vastly changed. Whole forests decimated, animals requisitioned, all for war use. Fishing boats converted to cruisers and minesweepers. Local industries adapted to the demands for munitions and new mechanised weaponry. Theatre and the arts rallied support for the war effort by highlighting heroics and humour. But it was the young soldier poets who described the horror profoundly. The Gordon Highlanders faced a new era of war as veterans were decimated by bombs, gas and tanks. Raw recruits replaced the dead. Those who refused to fight were seen as cowards and were often treated as outcasts. As men left valuable jobs to go to war, women filled the void. Working the land or in factories, driving trams or delivering the post, these opportunities were empowering to women as never before, which ultimately led to them having the vote. The war years of 1914 to 1918 forever changed the working landscape of the northeast corner of Scotland. The Great War affected every community as people were quite literally transformed by working life to war life. Life being a fisherman in the First World War would be very scary because the seas would be with mind and just going fishing would be very dangerous. I think a scary part of fishing would be you might go fishing and a German submarine could come and take it and capture you and take you to Germany to a concentration camp and kill you. I think the life of the fishermen during the First World War would have been very scary for them and their families because they didn't know what could be happening to their husbands or brothers or sons. And for the fishermen that could have been really scary because they didn't know if they would be returning to their family. I think that on the whole, lots of fishermen would be excited about their boats being turned into minesweepers, but some might not, they might not want it 
Their boats to be turned into minesweepers because they have the risk of being destroyed. What struck me about trench art is that they have to make little tiny models out of bullets. So it's like you have the fear that the enemy's going to come across and come and get you, and you have the fear of bombs going off behind you. So like you're trying to do little models with that fears. That would be very difficult. What struck me about trench art was that you had to use gunpowder to make pictures for your families, but then the, but the officer had to make sure that it wasn't illegal. I thought the trench art in the First World War was really good because they managed to get the bullet cases into other bullet cases and carve them and make them as edges and corners. And once they had finished making their models, they were really good and they were like aeroplanes and tanks and sometimes they made soldier figures. And I thought it was really good how they managed to do that. I thought it was really amazing that they were able to make such small, be pretty and beautiful things out of bits of metal lying about and then it would keep their mind off of war and their families. What struck me about the role of women before the war was because they couldn't do very much apart from be housewives and the men got all the good jobs, which was pretty unfair. What struck me about the women was when the men went off to war, the women got to do all the jobs and then when the men came back, the men said to the ladies, it's my job, you need to go back to being housewives and I thought it wasn't fair. What struck me um, about the women, in, the role of women in World War I was that they weren't allowed to vote and I think that's unfair. What struck me about women at war was that when they got married they had to hand over all the possessions and money to the man, which wasn't very fair. I think the entertainment in the First World War is very different from now because in those days they had like chess and cards, but in these days we have iPads and Xboxes, so I think the kids in those days would have been wanting to play with the iPads and Xboxes in these days. I think entertainment in the First World War was really good because women got to take part in more stuff like football and other games, and I think it was really good for us. 
I think entertainment in the First World War wasn't that different from then and now because they went out to, into the streets and made up their own games. And at school, we go out into the playground and make up our own games. So it's not that different. I think entertainment in the First World War is quite different to now because today when we go to the cinema, it's sounds and 3Ds. Back then, it was just silent, so you had to watch really carefully to know what was happening. I think being a Gordon Highlander would be very scary because you know that at any point you could die, but I don't think many people think, OK, I'm going to be next, because there are all those people, but you never think it's going to happen to me, I'm going to get shot. But it's at least they knew they could come home to their families because in, like, a war, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd be expected to fight up to the end of the war. I think being a Gordon Highlander would be quite exciting because you could go to different places, but at the same time quite nervous because you could die at any time. But at least you'd be serving your rules to your country. I think life being a Gordon Highlander would have been really hard because they didn't have much protection. And what really shocked me the most was they didn't have a helmet. And it was such a big improvement when they had a helmet, when they got a steel helmet. And I think it would have been very difficult carrying all these equipment and uniform wherever you went, and it would have been very tiring and exhausting. I think being in a life of war artist would be quite scary but quite exciting at the same time because you're painting for your friends and family and, your, and the people in your town. But at the same time, I think it would be quite scary because you can get bombed at any time. I think being in a life of war artist would be quite fun because you get to draw, paint and like kind of do what you like and you get to meet new people and make very good friends with them and you can maybe even meet their family. I think life being a war artist would be quite exciting because you get to go and paint what's happening in the war, but it'd also be quite haunting if you saw someone like die because it'd be with you forever. But it would be quite happy because then you, not every artist got to paint the war. Well, I think um, being a war artist would be scary and exciting, like if you're like painting people in the war and um, a German comes and just shoots you or you get bombed out of nowhere. I think being a Gordon Highlander in the trenches is kind of hard because you're carrying all the equipment, including the rifle, and then lice would be in the pleats of your kill and it would be horrible. 
I think being a Gordon Highlander on the trenches would be very tight because at night, if you were going to sleep, there'd be a lot of rats squeaking and scratching you so you couldn't get to sleep. Being a Gordon Highlander in the trenches would be terrifying and it rains a lot so you could get trench foot and your circulation could stop and you might need to get it chopped off. Life being a Garden Highlander in the trenches would be frightening because of all the loud noises going off and the bombs exploding and the guns shooting. Life being a conscientious objector would have been hard because you wouldn't have been taken out of your really easy job to do really hard labour that you'd never done before and you get called a coward and it's not really fair because it might have been against your religion or your belief. What surprised me about the dice camp was the tents had leaky, was leaky and the water would run right through them and you'd be sleeping on the cold hard ground. I think being a conscientious objector would have been sad and scary because you're separated from your friends and family for a long time. The conditions would be really cold and freezing and mud would get in your tent if it was raining and altogether really miserable. But by Singlon now we do We've got the ship, we've got the men And we've got the money too We've found a friend in me The Great War eventually ended on the 11th of November 1918. It's difficult to know the total number of casualties in World War I. Some estimate the wounded at over 37 million, with 16 million dead. That's three times the population of Scotland wiped out. It was one of the bloodiest episodes in human history. Hell of trench, never ending. Stench of fear, rot, blood, gas, horrifying screams, gunshots, screeching of bombs. Only comfort, home. Thoughts of safety, family, and now back. 
to change reality. Relief mingled with clinging horror, a permanent scarring, yet forced to try to forget, to move on, yet forced to try to forget, to move on. <laughs>